birds will sing that you are part of everything, dear Prudence. Won't you open up your eyes? Hey guys, this is Danger Man. Today we're going to interview the band Milk Drive. They're out of Texas. Now, they are a jazz grass band. I'm going to ask you to open your mind when you listen to this, because I realize many of you are from a younger crowd that will most likely listen to anything from dubstep and house to just straight up alternative rock. But there are other sounds out there you're allowed to listen to and like. Uh, I have uh, I have many friends from uh, volleyball who are big, hulky, muscular guys, and they go to country concerts all the time and. Uh, they won't have anything of anybody putting down country, despite the fact that I personally don't listen to country. Um, but there's always something from every genre that crosses over that you can like. And in this case, I happen to like this band. Uh, I hope you will too. I want to introduce you to them now. And um, if you're already a fan of Milk Drive, you're going to really like the interview because you're going to find some really cool things out about the band that you would have not thought anybody would, would have asked in an interview before. So let's get right to it. Hey guys, this is Danger Man, and uh, you're watching Danger Man Double X, and you may have come across from uh, my website, Danger Man's Lair, but uh, uh, however you got here, today we are with the band Milk Drive, uh, a couple of members. Um, I look at them as a bluegrass band. What, do you, what would you define yourself as? I'm going with uh, jazz grass these days. Okay. <laughs> that covers most of it. <laughs> Um, you know, no matter how you slice it, it's, it's great music. So I mean, you can call it what you want. Um, <laughs> is this your first Skype interview, guys? Uh, yes, for sure. <laughs> was a lot of was a lot of work preparing for this, or was it just was it, what the hell? We'll just turn on the camera and roll with it. Oh no! I mean, yeah. Luckily, we we're, we're all familiar with at least some of the, the software involved. All right. <laughs> um, so, how did you guys come up with the name Milk Drive? I'll let Noah fill that one. Uh, we, uh, Dennis and I met uh, first uh, as young kids playing the fiddle uh, up in the Northwest. I'm from Idaho, not uh, too far from where the National Fiddle Contest is held. And uh, there was a street called Milk Drive, an old abandoned milk factory that we used to get in, uh, go hang out and get, <laughs> get, all trouble. <laughs> get in trouble, all sorts of different things. And uh, yeah, so that was a memorable thing. So when we started the band, that was something that we. Uh, Thought too, and, and went with that. So, have you, have you have, have the people who live on Milk Drive now, or anybody about there? Are they are they aware of this? Do they realize they've been immortalized? No, no, it's like a Walgreens now. I think. <laughs> so you can't, even, you can't even go back there and like stand under the street sign and take a picture. Or? No, oh, wow, no long. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we kind of got ahead of ourselves. So, you got no. You, you, which what, what do you what are your names and what do you play in the band? Uh, I'm Noah Jeffries, and I uh, primarily play the guitar in the band. I'm Dennis Ludeker. I play mandolin uh, most of the time. We, we all switch around quite a bit uh, with all the instruments on stage. And uh, wh where does where does Milk Drive hail from? Where are you from in the, in the U.S.? Houston, Texas. So how far have you uh, played? How far have you traveled now from your home base to, to perform? Uh, from Maine to uh, Washington State. Uh, all wow. the way from yeah. Atlanta to Southern California. Wow, I'm out, everywhere. I'm, I'm out of Delaware. You're gonna have to tell me when you're striking distance for me. Philadelphia, DC, New York. Yeah, okay, for sure. Definitely will. Um, so what could people expect at one of your performances if they come out see? You? Oh man, uh, a lot of uh, roots-based instruments with uh, a lot of um, a newer sound being put on them. Um, we definitely. Um, Hold hold tradition, um, hold to tradition with our music, but we uh, we're also looking for you know kind of a new sound to do with those instruments, and uh, are are trying to stay traditional in the sound at all necessarily well, uh, I mean, of the music. You know, they always say um, your audience will find you, but do you, do people you surprise people when you go out and play? I mean, do you you find that like people are not prepared for what you play, but then love it. Most people, I think, expect a bluegrass band when they see fiddle, mandolin, guitar, and upright bass, and we're really anything but. I mean, in our live set, we may play one or two songs that are more traditional style, but still not traditional tunes. Mm -hmm. are, you getting, so, are, are, you getting, yeah. are you getting picked up by a lot of uh, college stations now? 
Did you find that to be the yeah, case? Yeah, happening quite a bit. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you've got to do this a lot going and in, in, in touring around because that definitely helps. But uh, yeah, we've gotten a we got a radio promoter for this last one, and it seemed to help a lot with uh, just getting getting the record around uh, the entire base of the nation where we're we are touring. So, what's, what's getting airplay right now for you? Uh, a lot of waves, a lot of uh, dear prudence, uh, run and hide, and a uh, couple of the instrumentals. A couple of the instrumentals, it, yeah. It, it's it's really weird that a lot of them get like whoever likes whatever song that gets picked up. We never try and push one song too awful hard, um, because everyone seems to like a different one because uh, we cover so many different styles. I feel um, so. So where, where, yeah. do you guys, where do you guys fit into the Pandora playlist? Where do people find you on there? I mean, did you get that? Did you get roped in there yet? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're our, yeah. Our first album's on there. I'm not sure if the, the, the second, second one's on, on there, yet. there yet. It's like a weird deal that, that that all has to go through before it gets on there. But yeah, there, it, it's funny the things that you see us linked to on there. But it's it's slowly starting to morph into to more what it needs to be as people are adding us with other people and that are more like us. So what made it's you, interesting. Sorry, I cut you. Off. What made you choose? <laughs> um, Dear Prudence. Um, we wanted to do a uh, Beatles cover for quite a while. I mean, like anybody really wants to, to do do one, but couldn't choose which one to do. Had no idea. And uh, was it Brad Meldo? Yeah, yeah. We, we heard the Brad Meldo uh, version, and it always comes back to the instrumental stuff. It seems for me, and that, that kind of that can kind of give us a different twist on on a way to present it. So we kind of blended that with their their lines, original lines and stuff, and uh, got got some pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, for such an organic choice, it sounds it, that when you hear the song, it's like, oh, that was genius that they picked that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were just hoping it turned out good, but it, we were pretty proud about it. How yeah, it, I mean, worked out. It, it is quite compelling. I like it quite a bit. I have a 16 year old son, and he's you know he he did not want to hear. You know, when I told him the genre, and he loves it. Yeah. So it's you know it's no, all, see, uh, it's, in a play, it's in a playlist for him too, and so and so now <laughs> cool. you, you know now he's at his high school, you know, telling his friends. And, that's <laughs> that's good to hear, man. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I, I I get a sense in a number of the songs there's like a competition of sorts that takes place between you as instrumentalists. Uh, you guys play off each other? Or is that is that, is that am I see? Am I reading that right when I hear the music? Yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, growing up, like he was saying, we uh, we all went to fiddle competitions together, and uh, it was interesting how much we, um, besides the fact that we would compete against each other, we would be um, doing a lot of jamming in the parking lot and really making good friends um, out, of, out of the whole situation too. So it, it uh, you can definitely tell that that is still a part of it, where we're pushing each other um, to to get better constantly, but it's it's a very collaborative way of doing it. So everyone's inspiring each other to to get better constantly, which is really cool. This is our cut in spots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing catch up. Um, how how much time did it take you to to put waves together? Um, <clears throat> some of the songs we had already uh, most of the songs that we played on waves we at least performed two or three times live. Most of them. So yeah, probably a month or two. All, a month or two before the album was recorded, all of the material was about settled and, and we spent, ready. We spent what, like two or three days doing a, like a pre-production. Yeah, we went out and, kind of and getting all the songs together. Yeah, we we went and recorded the album ourselves in a basement, um, and uh, just heard what it was supposed to sound like. And whereas the one right before this, we we didn't do that. We kind of went into the studio with the songs fresh and still being arranged as you know as they were coming into the studio, so it was really nice to have a, a super handle on, on exactly what we were going to do and kind of just tweak that a little bit. So. Um, you know, you got Tom's Ranch, Benny's Bus, and Gar <laughs> Garmagal's Cat, uh, is that right? Gargamel's Cat, yeah, the old Smurfs re reference there. These are, um, you know, when, you, when you're looking at the, uh, the, the song list as, a, as an audio file, I've noticed that these are jam sessions, they're instrumentals, not any other song. So, um, how did you, you know, these songs come about from rehearsal? What, what do you, how do you come, how did, where did these come from? Um, that style of music is more what this band really started as. Uh, very uh, elaborate, I don't know, not necessarily elaborate, but uh, compositions rather than uh, a tune, where it's like a two-part tune. They all, they all seem to have multiple parts 
in different time signatures, maybe different keys. The little journeys. Yeah, that they and go that's through. where the, the band really started as an instrumental side project, and so that's kind of uh, still our our outlet to what we originally were. Uh, Get weird. Yeah. And, and what <laughs> Noah always said with those tunes is you, uh, you know, there's no words, so name them whatever you want, and that's usually going to be like a thing. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah. the time. so you know the you know the inevitable question: Who the hell is Garmagal? And uh, what's our cat got to do with this? Gargamel. He he's uh he was uh Gargamel was the uh, the dude <coughs> in the Smurfs who was who was uh, the bald monk guy that 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 uh, had the cat that he was had, always trying to get the Smurfs. Yeah, he was the evil so dude. we could we could never remember the name of Gargamel's cat. That was supposed to be the which name is, of the song, which is, which is, uh, is uh, Azrael. Yeah, Azrael. Yeah, well, Azrael. I can remember. So it's supposed to be Azrael, but Gargamel's cat is just as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show myself who I really am here, and that is I I could care less about the Smurfs, but when I hear Azrael, I remember that Azrael was in the Smurfs simply because of the character of Batman, <laughs> Azrael. So, but this well, if you would have been around when we were naming it, it would have been named that because we <laughs> couldn't remember for the life of us. No idea. <laughs> and uh, and and Benny's bus. Do we go into that one too? Do we find out when as Benny is like uh, uh, a. Yeah, Benny's bus is actually, uh, since we all met at the National Fiddle Contest, that's where we grew up seeing each other once a year. And uh, as a band, when we first started, we went back to the National Fiddle Contest. And one night, Dennis and Brian and I were jamming. I was playing upright bass, and there was this little riff that we were playing. And there's this taco place that is there every year called Benny's Tacos. All right. And so we did the little riff, and then went and had a taco. Right, we got it. We got it. <laughs> we we'll remember that. Tune. <laughs> and then uh, couldn't remember what the tune was, and and we were they were on. Mom, yeah. yeah, Dennis's mom was the the one that reminded us, and we're sitting on Benny's bus, and we're like, well, this is we've got to figure out a name for this song. We've got to write it right now. And she goes, why not Benny's bus? So <laughs> that kind of yeah. Uh, it, it, you it know, itself after we remember <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, this is great because people now listening to your CD are going to really remember the names of these songs because of these stories you're telling. So uh, <laughs> let's let's round it out. Tom's Ranch. Where Fish the tacos. <laughs> uh, Tom's Ranch is is one that um, um, got named because uh, like we were telling you that that pre production session that we that we went and did. Um, we have a really good buddy who uh, uh, owns um, a ranch in East Texas, and uh, he let us use use his this four hundred acre acre ranch as just kind of a you know getting out there and and, and letting the ideas flow. And and so we locked ourselves in, in the basement of his. <laughs> Is a place out there, and just went to town on these songs. So this this is one that came together at Tom's Ranch, and so we just kind of honoring him by letting it letting us use the space, and that was kind of the inspiration that kind of so, stuff it all together. So I, 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 is it fair to understand that like in the future, then you're you're not going to name any instrumental songs any straight adjectives. You're gonna you're gonna skip this convention. <laughs> is it a slide step? Can't... <laughs> slide step. <laughs> One of them's a move, kind of. Yeah, yeah. it's it's sort of a move. Yeah, the, the, as they get as the tunes get headier, I'm sure the names will too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, since we're having fun here, where are you at now? I see, you look like you're on somebody's front porch. Uh, is, uh, where are we at? Uh, we're actually uh, on the back porch of some family friends. Uh, Julie and Eric. Uh, we're yeah, we were actually at a fiddle jam tonight. We were rehearsing all day and then uh, came over here for dinner. And we we do this at least once a week down here and. Just get together and play old fiddle tunes, like the, the same stuff that we grew up playing. And, do, do, and they make, stuff. do they make a cameo and immortalize themselves on the internet, or do you want to... <laughs> they're, they're, they're the picking right now. They're, yeah, they're gotcha. full on They're, they're right on there. it. So when you're done this interview, you will go back to just jamming away again. Yeah, yeah most likely, so, yes. so if you're not on stage, I guess tell people, what, what are you doing when you're not on stage? Are you, you know, you're not chasing skirts, you're, you're doing this. We're, 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 both, both, we're married. both married. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> The, but yeah, I'm chasing my son around. Uh, yeah, I know, I know the feeling. Um, I have, you know. Uh, what, so what about your front man? I know he couldn't make it tonight, uh, he, so I don't get to share with him any of my complimentary, uh, uh, you know, adjectives that I would throw at you in regards to some of these things. So what, what happened to him? Oh yeah, what about him? <laughs> Who needs him? Just go back to instrumentals. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, man. Uh, he, we're we're really enjoying uh, him him as a. Uh, as the singer, uh, when we first got this together, like Noah was saying, we were we were doing all instrumentals. We weren't singing at all, or really necessarily writing in that manner. And uh, when 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 we started talking about having to sing, he just he he stepped up and and uh, took it. He, he, he <laughs> took when, it over. When he stands there and he's singing, he seems like he's like this um, uh, relu reluctant 
soul, but he's really compelling. He's got a great soul. Um, yeah. Is that, about, we, is that about right? I mean, is, does that kind of happen? No, it? we agree with you, man. Yeah, he's 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 one of our favorite singers, and we, we didn't even know he, he was until about three years ago. So yeah. Definitely a sign that we didn't know of, of that guy. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 there's like a humility to him as he stands there, but I mean, he's belting it out. He, For sure. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's a... He's an interesting dude. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm here with a couple members of Milk Drive, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pick up something here that we missed, and it's these characters on the cover. I, I wanted to ask about this, and they've been so kind to to tell us. So, guys, what what, what do we? I'm holding this up. I got all four. Tell me about them. Uh, those are four custom painted marmots by uh, the artist Henry Shriver in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we were playing in Charlotte one uh, one night and happened to see his business card and said that that needs to be our next album cover and called him up and he designed exactly what we wanted. Uh, now this that's he over there on the yeah. left uh, playing with the guitar over my head and that's Dennis on the very far right with the mandolins. I got the crazy eye gun. The dual you mandolins. Uh, which way should I go? <laughs> so now uh, we, yeah. does this guy paint Henry. this guy paints the marmots in advance or did you decide you wanted to be marmots? Uh, he, it's, uh, basically his bread and butter is he grew up, uh, watching Marmots and, and that's like his thing. He, he's done so many adaptations of famous paintings like the Marmot Lisa. Yeah. He's done, he's obsessed with Marmots. He's really good at it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, about like, it was right around when we got done with the record, we called him up and he had it done probably within a month. I mean, he was, I mean, it was probably quicker than that, but I, I know it was a quick turnaround. Yeah, I got, yeah, guys, I won't ask price because I mean I already know I've uh, and I'm authoring a book and I've I've put the word out that I want a certain cityscape done and it, I I was knocked over by the amount of money that mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> I don't know about you but like it's like are we in the wrong business we should be illustrators because they they make yeah, a killing for sure <laughs> those guys are awesome <laughs> people get a, that little they get that actually it's a sticker um, do they not I mean I got one does do other people yeah. get one so, yes yeah yeah that we're still so. Get, have that sticker. Out. So if somebody <laughs> buys, so if somebody buys the, the the hard copy from you. They're going to get the sticker of that as well to stick on their car. Oh or, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So there you go. Yes. <laughs> somebody in the background saying, "Wait a minute, are they asking for a sticker for you?" Or no, someone wanted a beer. Oh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. So look, we're going to wind this up. Uh, thanks again for the for you know, a little adjunct there. That was really helpful to everybody. Oh sure. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Of course, Appreciate anytime. It. Thanks for having us. Well, there you have it. There's our interview with Milk Drive. I hope you liked it. If you do want to support them, don't just BitTorrent. Please buy the music. In today's world, when you BitTorrent, you really do hurt a band. Bands do get their money when you buy directly. So please, get out there and support them and any band that you decide you like by buying the music. I know, I sound self-righteous, but do it. It's too much for any man!